Do you remember your first crush? Do you ever wonder what happened to him or her? Or what your life might have been like if you'd stayed together? Well, these are questions that were answered for the woman in our next story in a truly remarkable way. It was 1975, and Jenna Hamburger was a seventh grade student in Fair Lawn, New Jersey. And, like most 13-year-old girls, Jenna was beginning to discover boys. My first crush was on a boy named Mark Meltzer, and he was one of the smartest kids I knew. He was also adorable. He had blondish reddish hair and freckles. He just was the kind of person that made you feel good to be around. And we had classes together. I would write notes to my girlfriends about him, how cute I thought he was. And I used to tell my mom I was going out bike riding, I'd be back in an hour, and I would always go down their street just to see if he was outside, maybe mowing the lawn. And my heart would always pound if I would happen to see him. That's what I remember about discovering the opposite sex. So how long have you been here? By the time she was a senior, Jenna had all but forgotten her first crush. But Mark Meltzer still had a soft spot in his heart for this young girl. Jenna. Hey. Thank you. Yeah, sure. And so, just before graduation, he gave her his class picture, along with a personal note. Here you go. Thanks. Hey, uh, let me... We sort of lost touch. I had no idea what had happened to him. And that was about it. Jenna and Mark went their separate ways. She enrolled in a local college, while he attended a school in Virginia. Nine years later, Mark was back in Fairlawn, running his father's sales agency. But the hard work and long hours left little time for a love life. The business that I'm in, I don't really have an office of people that I can socialize with, that I can uh, get a lot of people who, hey, I know somebody, why don't you go out with them? And my sister had uh, asked me at that time, she said, why don't you put an ad in New York Magazine? And I thought about it for a minute, and I said, well, you know what, why not? Give it a shot. So I sat down, and over a few days, I composed an ad. Call your mother. You've just found that nice Jewish boy she's always told you about. I live in New Jersey, but I've been looking for you everywhere, on ski slopes, at the movie. And at that point, I didn't tell anybody. I didn't want people to think of me as being, here's a loser who can't find some girl out on his own. He's going to go to a personal ad. But Mark was not prepared for the response he received from his ad. When I went to the mailbox, and I saw not only one letter or two letters, but I saw 10 letters in the first packet that came to me, and I couldn't believe it. For someone who didn't date a lot, here I was in a situation where I had three dates booked on one weekend. I had a Friday night date and a Saturday lunch date and a Saturday night date, which was a totally foreign experience for me. Mark ended up dating six of the women who'd written him. But none of them had that special spark he was looking for. And eventually, the letters and his interest in them began to dwindle. Meanwhile, Jenna Hamburger was a world away living in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I got myself a job working at a law firm in Center City. And I was on my lunch hour, and we always had a selection of magazines to look through. I happened to pick up the New York Magazine, and I started reading the personals, as I would do from time to time. I didn't really specifically think I would answer one. However, I saw this one ad that really spoke to me. The person seemed to have a sense of humor, and I thought this is a person that I could possibly have a lot in common with and get along with. I wrote a letter to the person, which was difficult, having never done it before. 
and I hoped that he wouldn't think it was strange that I was living in Philadelphia answering an ad from New York. And then I just tried to forget about it because I didn't even know if this person I was writing to would even respond to me. A few days later, Jenna's letter arrived. The envelope had a return address of Philadelphia, which was unusual because most of the responses were from the New York Tri-State area. She signed her name at the bottom, Jenna. And as soon as I looked at that handwriting, I said to myself, I know this person. And I said, this is Jenna Hamburger. This is Jenna Hamburger from Fairlawn. This is Jenna Hamburger that I went to school with. And this is fantastic because Jenna was somebody who I liked. I, I hadn't seen her since that time I gave her my yearbook photo, but I liked her in seventh and eighth grade. Mark immediately picked up the phone to give her a call. And it was the day before Valentine's Day, and I wanted to call her right then and there. I was very excited to do that. Hello. Hi, Jenna. Hi. Jenna, I'm the guy whose ad you answered in New York Magazine. And my heart started pounding because I obviously wasn't prepared for this. I can't believe you're calling. Jenna, you know, when I put that ad in, people ask me if I ever got a response from somebody who I know. And I know you. How do you know me? I started to get very nervous. My heart was pounding. I'm thinking, who could this be that knows me? Here I'm living in Philadelphia. I'm answering an ad in New York Magazine, and I'm answering the ad of somebody I knew. So I told Jenna, I said, Jenna, I know you. I grew up with you. We went to elementary school together. We went to junior high school together. And then I heard an, a gasp on the other side. Oh my god, I am so embarrassed. I knew right away that it was Mark Meltzer, who I hadn't seen in 10 years. It was an amazing, it was an amazing moment. And um, uh, at that time, I, uh, I was, we made a, a date. And two weeks later, they met face to face. I was very excited. I was excited when I drove out there and excited to see Jenna. And uh, it, was as if, uh, it was as if no time had, uh, had passed. Jenna Hamburger. Mark Meltzer. We hugged and just started talking. It really wasn't awkward. And before he left to go back home, he asked if he could see me the following weekend. So I knew right then and there that he was definitely interested in me as I was interested in him. And I knew basically at that point that I wasn't going to be calling up the 43 other girls who had sent responses to me. And I said, this was going to be it. I'm going to pursue this relationship with Jenna. Oh my gosh, yeah, look at him. But Jenna and Mark's chance encounter was about to take an even more amazing turn. Yep, I remember him. Sure. We were looking through uh, her photo albums. Jenna has a photo, basically, of every minute of her life. And as we were looking through the yearbook... Oh, honey, look what I found. Uh, that's, that's a bad picture of me. She looks at it. Oh, what a, that's a goofy picture. You know, look how silly you looked in high school. I want to see what you wrote. It was the custom back then to trade pictures, and you would write a very meaningful message on the back of the picture before you gave it to your friend. And she turned it over, and that's when she saw what I had written 10 years ago. Oh, my God, you are not going to believe what you wrote. And it said, let's make a pact and meet again in 10 years. It's incredible. That really is. And it was something that I had forgotten I had written. I don't know what the connection was, why I had even written that in high school. It was just some goofy thing. But uh, we looked at the calendar, and sure enough, it was almost 10 years when I had given her that photo that we hooked up again. And 15 months later, they became hooked together for life as husband and wife. I took a chance on love by answering this ad, and it worked out in the best way possible. It's hard for me to really explain how this happened, that out of all the hundreds of ads that were in the magazine, I answered his ad. I just have to believe that it was fate, that we were meant to be together, and after all those years of being apart, this was the way that we were meant to be brought back together.